What is going on YouTube world? I am your brother Reza and this is KRT Life, KRT Life with the Y. And this right here is going to be the definitive white sneaker review, real world, all time. doing this video again about white sneakers well the last time I did the uh, white sneaker review slash uh, real world uh, I guess advice or whatever a few people complained that I didn't have an actual common projects in the video common projects Achilles in the video while I was doing the review and so I decided to redo that video and I'm kind of glad that I did redo the video because upon further inspection and wearing all of these sneakers I noticed some things that I probably forgot about when I owned these sneakers before. So this go around, I tried to make this one, I guess, a little bit uh, more scientific. And I tried to have a real approach to the way I looked at these three different sneakers. So how did I go about doing that? I actually took a lot of notes and I'm going to um, read from those notes. So excuse me if I like... Um, stick to the script a little bit more in this video. Typically when I do these sneaker reviews, I kind of just go off on a tangent and just freestyle it and just start talking like I'm doing right now. But this time I actually have notes that I want to follow because I want to do my best to give y'all some real good consumer advice uh, on these three sneakers so you can make the best decision when it comes to you buying these sneakers. How did I go about doing this? Well, what I did was um, I had, obviously I got each one of these sneakers. I have the uh, Common Projects Achilles right here. I have the... Um, this is the H&M Premier, no, Premium White Sneaker. And uh, this one right here is the Adidas Lacombe. Uh, each one of these sneakers I've worn a lot. But I wore these sneakers for 10 days straight, each one of these. And I wore this one actually on holiday for probably a little bit more than 10 days straight. And then after I wore them for 10 days straight, I kind of alternated them and kind of like compared them, um, what they felt like when I initially put them on and how they wore through the day, et cetera, et cetera. And I took all that information and uh, I tried to make the most unbiased review of these sneakers I possibly could. So let me begin. And I'm going to start with the uh, actual Common Projects Achilles. This is probably, well, it is the most expensive and most hyped and most talked about sneakers that there is on the, on the, in the internet right now. So, Common Projects Achilles, what are my thoughts? I'm going to start off with the pros and then I'm going to go to the cons of each sneaker and then go through all the sneakers and pretty much give you a summary. So, with the Common Projects Achilles, this is a $410 sneaker. The pros of this sneaker is the, um, I'll start off with the bill. The build quality of the sneaker is phenomenal. I mean, throughout, through and throughout, from the outside to the inside, this is pure quality. The stitching is amazing. The uh, leather quality is amazing. When I looked at these side by side, and I started to notice certain things about this sneaker that makes it stand out from these two right here. And uh, one of the things I noticed the most was the actual side, the, the side panels and how big they are, and how, they, how big these side panels are, and how they close up the uh, center part over the top of your foot with the laces so it has like the smallest gap and the least amount of lacing going between here when you compare it to the uh, the H&M sneaker and I feel like that makes this one a lot better aesthetically like it just makes this sneaker just look so pretty and so beautiful um, I feel like it's also the most versatile of the three sneakers because it has the cleanest aesthetic and the cleanest look I feel like it's easier to wear the Achilles with anything than any one of these other sneakers. I mean, this thing looks good if you're dressed down. It looks good if you're dressed up. It looks good if you're going to work. It looks good if you're going to do some um, after hours activities, if you're traveling. Whatever you're doing, this sneaker just looks amazing. Um, the leather quality of this sneaker is just like seriously A+. Plus. It is like, it's kind of, I saw a review where a guy was talking about these and he said that this feels like the type of leather that they would use to make a leather coat. And I would have to agree with that. It feels like a really nice, good quality leather coat. It's just uh, great. It feels amazing. Uh, let's see, the durability of this. So when I bought this pair right here, this pair right here was used. And um, it was in decent shape. And I've been wearing it for about two months now. And I guess putting it through fairly high use. And I have to say that the durability of this is like pretty darn good. It doesn't crease very much at all. 
Um, the sole is still in really, really good shape. And mind you, I'm probably the second or who knows, probably third owner of these. Um, and I feel like this sneaker is just so robust and so rugged. Like this is one of those type of sneakers that can literally probably last you three to six years, depending on how you wear it. Um, let's see what else. It's made in Italy. I don't know if that really matters to you guys out there. To me, it doesn't really matter so much, but that's one of those things that, you know, I guess, uh, playing to the actual price of these uh, shoes. And they're comfortable. These shoes are extremely comfortable. After wearing these shoes every single day, like, well, not every single day, but wearing them 10 days, uh, 10 days straight, day in, day out, these shoes are super comfortable. And that's with the factory insole. Like, you can't replace the insoles on a lot of these models for some reason. I guess they're stitched in. Um, some of the, I guess, earlier ones, I think you could, but the latest ones, I think, uh, the sole, not the sole, but the insole is stitched in and you can't replace it. But that being said, the insole that comes with these sneakers is extremely comfortable. And I mean, these are actually a lot more comfortable than I remembered. So I was highly impressed with the uh, Common Projects Achilles. And um, yeah, those are all the good things about it. Now let me get to the cons real quick. So the cons, <laughs> I mean, the first one is obvious. This thing is crazy expensive, $410 for a, a plain white sneaker. Like, that's a lot of money. That I, I feel like this shoe is kind of overpriced. I feel like the better price of this shoe would probably be like maybe $250, but $410, man, that's a lot of money for a really, really plain shoe. Um, another con that I thought was a con is that the insole isn't removable. So if the insole isn't comfortable for you, then you won't easily be able to switch your insole out without probably partially destroying the shoe. Uh, this thing is heavy. This thing is very, very heavy compared to the other two sneakers that I have up here. And um, yeah, that, that you definitely feel the heaviness of this sneaker as you wear it throughout the day. Uh, it can also get very hot. Now, I don't have, I'm not one of those kind of people who have like issues with my feet sweating and all that kind of stuff in the summertime. But I did notice wearing this day in, day out every day that this was a very, very hot sneaker. If you're standing in direct sunlight or if you're like, you know, waiting for a bus or doing something outside and you're wearing these. This sneaker is definitely hot, doesn't breathe very well, and um, yeah, not like uh, the most comfortable probably summer sneaker you could probably get. Um, and it scratches somewhat easy. So if you look closely, uh, hopefully the uh, camera can pick this up, but you can see that the paint and the finish on this uh, Common Projects Achilles scratches very easy. And these other two shoes, I mean, these shoes have been through it, especially this one right here. It doesn't have a single scratch on it. And I've really, really, really worn this thing into the ground, this one as well. But there's no scratches on these. But the paint and the finish on the Achilles tends to scratch very easy. And to some people, that might add to the patina of the shoe or the look of the shoe. Um, to me, I kind of feel like that's a negative. If you look on the inside here, you can see where the uh, finish has worn off and it has worn into the leather. I hopefully uh, the camera can pick that up pretty good. But um, yeah, it, it scratches fairly easy and that's kind of a, a, a massive con to me for a shoe that's so darn expensive. So those are my basic cons of the uh, Common Projects Achilles and we're gonna move on to the uh, H&M uh, premium quality white sneaker, whatever they call this thing, because we're gonna stick to the task and we're gonna stick to these notes so we can make this as quick as possible. So moving on, H&M premium quality. Pros, the, the price. $59.99, you can't beat that. I got these for $12.99 on closeout and $12 for a shoe, I mean, come on, that's like amazing. Um, as a very easily removable insole, out the box, these are not comfortable at all. So the first thing that I did when I got these was remove the insole and put an aftermarket insole in there, completely changed the feel of the shoe, made this thing like super cush, super comfortable. I wore this shoe literally every day when I first got this thing. I would wear it to work and do all kinds of stuff in this shoe. And I mean, this shoe still looks really, really, really good. Um, it's kind of versatile, but it lacks the cleanliness of the common project right here. This common project, I feel like the silhouette and the, narrowest, the narrowness of it and the way that the top of the shoe closes in a bit tighter makes the common project look a lot better and a lot cleaner and a lot more versatile. Uh, so. This is a little bit further behind this one as far as that goes. Let's see, easy to clean and maintain. These literally, you can wear them in dirt, you can wear them in dust, you can wear them in mud, and you just wipe them and you just keep going. They like literally shed dirt like the back of a duck. 
Uh, let's see. It doesn't scratch easy. Now, this leather right here, it feels really, really tough. And that's probably part of why it doesn't scratch easy. This feels like a pair of work gloves. Like, <laughs> it's like really, really tough leather. Like, you know those like work gloves that you get at Home Depot when you're going to do gardening and you're going to be picking up thorns and stuff like that? That's what this leather feels like. It's really thick, it's really tough, and it's very heavy. Um, Worry-free wear. These things are only like $60, and sometimes you can get them on sale for less than $60. So it's like when you wear these out and about, if you're jumping on the subway or the metro in your local uh, city, and you're riding your bike in them and you're just going to coffee shops and kicking them about, you don't have to worry about, oh, did somebody step on my $400 pair of shoes? These things are cheap. So it's literally worry-free wear. And if you destroy these or lose these or if somebody steals them, you're not really losing that much money. So that is a massive plus when it comes to the uh, H&M Premium Quality Sneaker. Um, this pair was made in Portugal, so this was made in the EU. And even though it was made in the EU, <laughs> the quality control is nowhere near as good as the common projects. Um, now these are made in India, actually, according to the H&M website. Um, but like I said, with the, this being made in Italy, I don't know if that really matters to you, country manufacturer. To some people it does. To me, it doesn't really matter that much. So those are all of my pros on the H&M Premium Quality Sneaker. Now let me talk about the cons real quick. The first and number one most obvious con of this shoe is the extreme lack of detail to the finished product. If you look right here at the ankle grabber, you can see where the like leathers don't even line up properly. The stitching is abhorrible or abominable. It's just like extremely bad. The lace, the stitching is coming loose there. And mind you, these have been worn a lot, but you can definitely see where they cut corners and where like. <laughs> The stitching on the back is cricket right here. Doesn't line up versus if you look at the common projects. Well, I guess the common projects, no, it kind of lines up a lot better. But like just little stuff like that, you can see where they cut corners to make this shoe affordable. And while it is affordable, I mean, the attention to detail, if you're one of those people that's like, uh, what do they call it when somebody like is really, really AC, uh, OCD? Yeah, OCD. If you're an OCD person, this shoe might not be the shoe for you. Uh, what else? They're squeaky. Uh, these things, like, <laughs> they just squeak for no reason. Like, when I would wear these to my office, people would hear me coming down the hall and be like, whose shoes are squeaking? It would just, I don't know, something about the way the tongue rubs inside of this shoe just makes it squeak. Uh, da, da, da. Very hot in the summer because of the very, very hard, thick leather that this shoe is made out of. Like I said, it's made like a work glove. So it's very hot when you wear these in the summer. And what else was I gonna say about it? Squeaky, very hot. Oh, I don't like this padding around the ankle. I feel like the padding around the ankle takes away from the silhouette of this actual shoe and makes it look not as clean and versatile uh, like the uh, Common Projects. I mean, when you look inside and you see how this thick padding on this one versus this one is really thin and really soft, it just makes this shoe look a little bit more clunky and not as like streamlined and smooth as the Common Projects Achilles. So um, yeah, I guess that pretty much sums up all of my cons of the H&M uh, Premium Sneaker. And that brings us to the last, but not least, the Adidas Lacombe. The Adidas Lacombe, let me tell you, this shoe right here, it really blew away all my expectations of what a white sneaker can be. This shoe was so good, it made me get, get rid of my Stan Smiths, I got rid of my Superstars, I got rid of my Gucci's, I got rid of every other white sneaker I had, uh, Converse, um, what else it, Comme de, Comme de Garçons, I had the white low top Comme de Garçons, got rid of those, like I got rid of everything when I got rid of this sneaker because it was so good, and this sneaker is so good, I'm actually struggling to keep these, so without further ado, let me talk about the pros and the cons of the Adidas Lacombe. So the pros. The pros of this one is that it's priced accordingly. When you can get this one online at the Adidas website for $110, you can get the one with the burgundy colorway for uh, $88 right now. And I mean, I think that's a very, very reasonable price for a sneaker that's so versatile and so good looking. Um, the finish to the the finish to the finish, <laughs> the finishing details and attention to detail is second to none on this. Like it's really, really good. Well, probably not second to none. I think that the Common Projects is a little bit better because you can see right here where they put the uh, the sole. You can see where they connected the sole right here. Something that, you know, on the Common Projects is hitting. But uh, other than that, the attention to detail and the finishing on this shoe is top notch. The stitching is top notch. Uh, the leather quality, this leather is extremely soft and extremely lightweight. 
and very, very breathable. And uh, so these are great for like really, really hot days. Like if you're on holiday somewhere going to a beach or if you're like going to a festival or anywhere where it's going to be like extremely hot, extremely muggy, this is a shoe. It is like massively breathable. These holes, these three stripes on the side are actually just holes that allow your foot to breathe. And the, like I said, the leather is very lightweight and very flexible. So this shoe just, it is a rock star when it comes to summer wear. But it's also good when it's not so warm. I wore these in Ukraine for the entire time that I was there. And a few of those days it was cold and it was rainy and these were not that bad. My, my feet actually didn't even get wet. I don't know how that happened, but we got caught in the downpour one day in the city and we were walking around, feet didn't get wet. I didn't get like freezing or anything. So these actually didn't do terrible in the winter time, but I'm pretty sure these would have been a lot better for really cold and really rainy days. Uh, what else? The insole is comfortable out of the box, but the insole is kind of like hard to remove. And I think you would have to, I think it's glued in, so you would have to tear it out to change it. But luckily for me, the insole is very, very comfortable out the box. Um, leather is extremely light and extremely soft. Okay, so yeah, back to the leather being uh, soft and uh, light. This is like a pair of driving gloves. This is what this feels like. You know, the really soft, like good driving gloves that you like get from like Nordstrom's and Neiman Marcus, something like that. That's what this leather feels like. Um, it's easy to clean and the leather doesn't really scratch that easy. Like I said, I wore these traveling for about 10 days straight. This is the only pair of shoes that I took with me to Ukraine. And I wore, I wore these in mud. I wore them getting on and off of trains. I wore them in the airport, carrying luggage, all the kind of stuff that will really mess up a sneaker. And this doesn't have a scratch on it, not even one. So these are very durable, very lightweight. And I highly, highly recommend these. Um, yeah, easy to clean, all that kind of stuff like I just said. Cons, what are the cons of the Adidas Lacombe? I feel like because of the design, these are probably the least versatile, versatile of the bunch. I feel like they're uh, the most stylish, but the least versatile because of the black tongue and the black highlight here, and then like the bold gold across the tongue, the frills around the, uh, the upper, um, this little thing right here on the toe box. I feel like all these little, atten these little additions and attention to detail make this shoe the most stylish, like I said, but also the least versatile. If you were gonna dress these up, like these are like, if you were wearing dress clothes and you swapped out to this, it would make sense. I feel like with this, you could pull it off, but it wouldn't look as good as the Achilles or the H&M shoe. Um, those are pretty much the cons, except for the last one. So right now I have a shoe tree in this, so you can't really see the creasing, but I feel like the creasing on this one is the ugliest out of the bunch. And that's one thing I forgot to really talk about when I was talking about all three of these. The creasing on the H&M is almost non-existent. And, non and I think I wore these shoes the longest. Uh, the H&M, you can see a decent amount of creasing on there, but these shoes have gotten a decent amount of wear. These right here probably have the least amount of wear, but have the most creasing. So that's just something else to be mindful of is crease if creasing is one of those things that gets on your nerves. So what is a summary? What, how, do, how do I feel about these sneakers um, overall? How, how can I summarize this thing if you're a consumer and you're out there and you're a guy or a girl and you're trying to get yourself an awesome pair of white sneakers? Well, I feel like if you can afford it and you dress up every day and you're the type of person that only has like four or five pairs of shoes and you really, really keep your shoes in heavy rotation, I would have to go with the Common Projects Achilles. I feel like this shoe right here is a tank of a shoe, regardless of the, of the fact that the uh, it scratches easy. I feel like this is something that you can literally wear with anything, anywhere, any time of year, and you'll absolutely get every single dollar out of this shoe that you put into it. Um, it's just a great shoe. Like upon like this is my third pair of Common Projects Achilles, and I feel like this is just one of those things that it's it's just a beast. Like it's yeah, if you pay four hundred dollars for this. You'll get your money out of it in five years, but I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. And if you can't afford that uh, $410 for this shoe, I feel like this right here would probably be the best shoe for you. I think that this shoe right here is probably the best shoe for, like, if you're the type of person that, you know, you just want a clean look, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. If you want something really durable that you can really beat around and not really care about it, and not really have to worry about, you know, did I lose them or, you know, did somebody steal my common projects? Like, 
This one is the best one if you just want something clean and you don't really care about all the other stuff that comes with a pair of common projects. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the Adidas Lacombe. This right here, now if you live in a warmer climate, this is your shoe all day. This shoe is just amazing. It's durable. It's light. It's affordable. I think that out of all of these shoes, I feel like this is probably... It's really hard for me to say what's the number one and rank these actual shoes because they're all really, really, really good shoes. But if I had to rank them all, would I say that the Adidas Lacombe is the number one or would I say that the... Oh, man. This is really hard. Um, this is... Jeez. I might have to edit a little bit of this out. So it's going to go bloop for a second. Bloop back into right now. Man, I'm still thinking about this. I don't really know. This is hard to decide. Hmm. All right, we're going to edit some more of this out. Bloop. All right, boop. Now we're coming back in. One, two, three. All right. So I really, really sat here and thought about this really hard, y'all. And it's really hard for me to put a conclusion on to which one of these shoes is the number ones. I honestly have to say that, I'm just going to say it like this. All of these shoes are winners. You cannot go wrong with either one of these shoes if you want an all-white shoe. I feel like one shoe is better for cold weather. One shoe is better for if you really just want those people that don't care. And one shoe is better for warm weather, warm weather wear. That's really all I can say at the end of the day about these shoes. I'm your brother Reza. This is KRT Life. KRT Life with the Y. I sincerely hope that this review helps you make a good decision on which white sneaker to wear. Because $400 is a lot of money to pay for common projects. But if you do pay that... You, I want you to get all of your money out of them. The H&M is awesome, and so is the Lacombe. They're all great sneakers at the end of the day. Carry to life. Carry to life with the Y. I'm out. Uh, there's, some, there's two things that I want to clarify. Number one, when I said that this shoe is for people that don't care, I meant that this shoe is for people who don't care about branding and, you know, people recognizing that, oh, I got common projects on and all that kind of stuff. Like, this is a great shoe, and I think it's a great uh, price point, you know what I'm saying, and just an all-around awesome shoe. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk about real quick was the laces. I did not talk about, the, in the full body of the video, the different laces on these shoes. The laces on the Common Projects, I absolutely love them. I think part of that, like I said, is because it is so narrow right here. These laces, I kind of don't like these laces. They're kind of thick, and I don't like the way they lace up. When you lace up the shoe, I feel like these laces cover up too much of the tongue, where this leaves a little bit more of the tongue exposed. But I love the laces on the Adidas Lacombe the best. When you lace them, they fall great right here, and they look so nice and graceful, and they don't cover up the Adidas Lacombe stuff. So as far as laces go, the Adidas Lacombe is the winner. The thing that I ran off before talking about, y'all are probably curious what that was, socks. I see a lot of these shoe guys talk about shoes, but they don't talk about socks. Do y'all want to see a video in the future where we talk about socks and, you know, what kind of socks are really cool and which ones are really bad? Let us know in the comments. KRC Life, out.